Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, today I thought I'd make a side dish to go with some smash burgers that I'm going to be making on the Blackstone later on. And it's something nice and chilled. It's, it's hot up here today. It's in the 80s. But I wanted to make some burgers on the grill. So I thought I'd just come up with a small, easy dish that we could throw together. Um, I'm going to use two cans of corn. Put those in. And these are the 15.2 ounce. They used to be 16 ounces. Everything's shrinking. But you can use frozen corn if you want. If you use frozen corn, like two, two and a half cups of corn. A nice fresh corn. What would be nice is you could also char this in a pan or on a griddle and make some nice char on the corn if you'd like. That would be great. I didn't want to fire up the grill yet and do that because I wanted this cold. I want to put everything in with the hot corn. So I'm going to set this aside over here while I get everything cut up. We're going to add to that a half of a red pepper, half of a green pepper, half a yellow pepper, whatever you want. Whatever you have, you can use. I just got red and orange because I thought it had a little bit more color. So I'm just going to slice along here, get this all out. I'm trying to get the white pith there out of the pith. Is that what you say, pith? That white stuff out. I want to get the bottom also. This thing is loaded with seeds. That's the most seeds I've seen in a pepper in a long time. So let me slice that one out and I'm going to get this one all sliced open. And don't forget the bottom. Just as good, look at all them seeds. Okay. You can hear the quail over here. That's the roosters you hear. I very seldom hear the females. Every so often they will sing. I know a lot of you saw on my Facebook page, Holly had got Bumblefoot, our white uh, hen that's behind me here in the aviary. And we took her out and kept her up in the cabin with us and putting medication on it and antibiotics and just trying to get her all back to health. And about the fourth day she'd had enough, she started, I, thought I heard birds singing outside it was her she was just singing up a storm saying something I think she just wanted back in with her sisters so but that noise you hear non-stop here anytime I'm doing videos is the roosters Let me get this over here I'll throw these in and I'm just gonna put these in a small dice just a little bit larger than the size of the corn kernels that way it's not overwhelming. And I just cut up the whole thing. So you know what? Instead of a half of one in this dish, we're gonna put a whole one. So we got a whole orange one in here. And I will set this aside because I'll use this in a dish later. And I'll just use this half of the red. Let me get the rest of those seeds out of there. And get some more of that white membrane. But you could add anything to this. This is a simple, it's just like a summer salad. You could throw some zucchini, whatever you have in your garden. You could throw that in here. But I thought the corn salad sounded good. I've had some fresh corn on the cob roast near as I do that. There we go. Get these dice down. Okay. All right, but yeah, these are the uh, male quail you hear over here, but five of the ones that we just hatched that are, well, they're three weeks old now, three or four weeks old. They are basically our first generation because they were, the eggs were laid here by the ladies back here in the aviary and we hatched them here. So these are actually full Cumberlatcha quail. Um, the ones back behind me and the roosters, we hatched out Holly, the white one, and the rest we purchased two days after she was born because she was the only one that hatched in that batch. If you remember back the problems we had. So they're kind of like second generation, but they're the first generation from on our farm. Now I've also got one jalapeno. You can leave that out. You can use a serrano. You don't have to use any, but I don't want this real spicy. So I'm going to take out the membrane and the seeds because that's where most of the heat lies and I am using my fingers which I shouldn't do so if you do this don't touch your eyes or your face 
or any body parts that you do not want to be on fire for a while. I think I got them all. I'm just gonna dice this one up about the same. Flip it over so, always put the waxy side down I don't know if you saw just a second ago, I thought I cut my finger, but I didn't. I had the waxy side up on one piece and my knife slid right across it. And that's why I tell everybody to put the waxy side down because that is how you're gonna cut yourself. And that cheese is falling over. Don't wanna waste that cheese. There we go. But yeah, all five of the new ones are out. We have two more in the incubator that are hatched from our eggs. And they're gonna go out here too. So we'll have seven total in this group. We have, back in July, I'm gonna cut this onion while I'm telling you this. I'm gonna use about a half a purple onion. And for the person that yelled at me and calling it a purple onion, telling me it's a red onion, that's purple, it's not red. I call them red, or purple onions, but uh, Back in July, on one of the Facebook pages I joined about quail, they had a contest, and just enter a picture of your quail, and whoever won, they're gonna pick one, whoever won, I thought, they always put picture of the month or whatever, and you get me on that. Well, I won with this picture, I'll put it right here at the top. This is one of the pictures I entered, and this one actually won. And I was all excited about winning, thought that's cool. My babies are gonna be pictured on the Facebook page. I can't get this skin off to save my life. Hold on. There we go. Then I read the fine print and I won 30 quail eggs. So with those five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 18, 19, 20 quail up here, I got 30 more eggs in the incubator right now, getting ready to hatch. I think they're on day seven or eight. So those are going to be coming in about two weeks. So if you walk, go on over to my homestead page, Cumberlatcha Homestead, you'll see I gave a tour this morning of all the animals and I showed our new quail hutch that we're building. So we're gonna have two, not only the original one that you all have seen over here, but we'll have another one over here to the left, right in front of the garden, or right to the side of the garden. So we'll have plenty of room for all these quail. So next spring, time for the farmer's market stall to begin again. I'll have plenty of quail eggs to sell. And what's even better than that, my 18 chickens that have been freeloading for the last month and a half, two months. And when did we get? No, we got those in May. So they've been freeloading since May. Got my first $3,687 egg yesterday. They finally started laying. So eat that $4 a dozen at the grocery store. I only paid $3,000 in some for my first egg, but they're now laying. I walked by a little bit ago and there's a second egg in there. I didn't get it out, but we do have a second egg. So let me give this one a stir. We're just gonna mix up all these veggies and corn. It's already beautiful. I love the colors. Yeah, I think a green pepper would have been nice because I don't have a lot of green in there, but that's okay. Now, to go on top of that corn, we're going to add, I'm gonna set this, this aside. We're gonna make the sauce for it. We're gonna use about a half a cup of mayonnaise and I'm just going to use my spatula. Get about a half a cup out here. That looks good. And we're going to add a quarter cup of sour cream. Let me get that out here. Yeah, that's about right. Whoops. We're gonna put one drop on the table. Let's leave that out, seal that, because I got some bugs flying around here. We're gonna put some lime juice, about a tablespoon of lime juice. Now the recipe calls for about a teaspoon of sugar, but instead of sugar, I'm gonna use some 
local honey, Tennessee mountain honey. Now just give it some good sweetness. Get that all mixed in there. Let's give us a little bit of pepper. And the salt and pepper is just to taste whatever you care for. I'm not going to put a lot of salt in there because I want to taste it first. We're going to put about a half teaspoon of smoked paprika. And about a half teaspoon of onion powder. I'm using mom's onion powder that she did for us. She dehydrated all these onions herself. And I'm keeping a little moisture packet in there to help keep them dry. And we're going to put a little bit of garlic in here. It calls for about a half teaspoon of garlic powder, but I am going to use a little bit of crushed garlic, minced garlic. Maybe a little extra because I like my garlic, as you guys know. And then you can put a little bit of taco seasoning. I'm using my homemade taco seasoning. About a half teaspoon to a teaspoon, whatever you like. I'm going to mix that in, taste it first. And I'm also going to put, I found this spicy ranchero creamy, creamy sauce. I'm just going to put a little bit of that in there. Maybe about a teaspoon or a tablespoonful. Bring all this together. Hmm, smells good. Let me give that a taste. That tastes good. That's delicious. A taco seasoning kind of gave it the extra punch, and I can taste that lime in there. So now let's throw our sauce in with the veggies. I can hear my pigeons back here. I don't know if you got the microphone. I hear baby pigeons. I don't know if you guys have been watching those over on Cumberlatcha Homestead's live feed. I think there's one going. I don't know if it's going now or not, but it was. They're two weeks, two and a half weeks old. At 30 days, they actually fly and they're full grown and come out just like their mamas and daddy. Okay, let's get this all combined. Now, when they were born, they were ugly. They were horrendous. I ain't never seen this thing. I'm gonna put a picture up here. This is the babies when they were born. See how beautiful those face only a mama could love. And here's what they look like now, two and a half, three weeks later. They're starting to get feathers. They're looking really good. There we go. All right, that's all mixed. And uh, where did I put it? I got some chives here. I'd like to be able to go to my garden and get some chives, but I don't have any over there. There's my chopped chives. I need something green in here since I don't have the green pepper. So I'm going to put some dried chives in here. I'm just going to open that up and mix them in. And then I'll put some on top just to make it pretty. Okay, where did my little spoon go? I'm going to give this a taste. Mmm. That's delicious. It doesn't need any more salt or pepper or anything. Got just a little bit of spice. Just a tad bit. That is really good. It's going to go good with these burgers. So, let's just call this our Tex-Mex corn salad. Tex-Mex corn, cold corn salad. It's easy to make as you've seen. You can substitute some of the things if you'd like. If you don't like the jalapeno, leave that out. But you can also, instead of putting in the taco seasoning, put some Cajun seasoning in. Some, um, what would else? Basil and garlic. That would be good. But just give this one a try. Again, thank you guys all for following us and sticking along and also going over to our Cumberlatcha Homestead channel. That's starting to grow now. We'll have a lot more videos there and a bunch here. So again, thank you very much. I appreciate and love each and every one of you. And until next time, y'all have a great week. Bye-bye.